All right, so uh, first thing we're going to do here is we're going to pull up our demo site. Um, so this is our, our demo site right here. You can see it's not fully built out. That's not the point of this. Uh, but you can see we have a header at the top. We are on a product page right here. Uh, you can see I've passed in a couple of parameters just to make it easier for this demo site. So one of them is the SKU. Just pass in the SKU and it'll load whatever SKU you want from your instance. Um, and it'll show you all the product information that I have on the page here. You also can see that I have a, a capability to add to cart, which we'll see in a minute. Uh, and you can see we have a little mini cart up here on the right-hand corner that shows you the total amount, total uh, cost of it, and gives you the ability to kind of go into a checkout page. Um, so that's kind of the, the use case here. And you can see that we have eight items in our cart right now uh, for this uh, standard uh, board right here. Um, and as I move over into Salesforce, I'm actually going to uh, go over to my Salesforce instance here, and this is the user that I'm logged in as, Shane Smite here. So if we're looking at Salesforce here, I'm gonna show you what the B2B standard page looks like so we can kind of see the comparison between the two of them. Um, so if you were to go into login as an experienced user here, what it would do is it would open up a new site for you. This is my tiny homes uh, demo brand site inside of Salesforce, and we're on the cart page right now. You can see that the uh, cart has a quantity of eight right here. So if I were to come back over here and say, you know, actually I need, I need 10 of these. Uh, that's a lot of wood. Uh, I need 10 of these, and if I jump back over into my headless site, refresh the page, and I were to jump back over into my cart, you can see that it's now pulling 10. This is not data syncing back and forth between Heroku and Salesforce. This is making an API call and getting the, the most relevant information at that time. Um, and vice versa, you know, I say I want to I want to add an item here, I, and I want to make sure that it shows up in my cart over here. If I were to click Add Item, click Refresh over here, uh, I'd be able to see the quantity is updated. So you can see that real time interaction between the two uh, sites and how powerful that is as you start to de decouple. And you can see that in this instance, it's a pretty basic page, but you really can do whatever you want. This is completely custom React front end with the, the Node back end. Um, I wanted to make a couple of call-outs here of, of uh, where to go to find uh, more information. Um, so one of the uh, key things that, that you should be looking at is the help documentation. This page right here is the cart page, and you can see that it allows you to do a git, a delete, and a create cart. It gives you a little bit of example of how to actually structure the payload and inter interface with the cart as you're doing this. If we pull up uh, VS Code here for a moment, I'm in my project, and this is a uh, coupled Node and React project here. So if we go down to this bottom section underneath routes, I have a cart.js route that handles all of the you know, getting of the uh, cart information, it handles the posting, it handles the updating of the cart if it's a new item. And if I open these up, you can see that um, you know, you're doing the authentication, which in this simple example here, we're doing uh, a SOAP authentication for our community, but you can do this over OAuth as well. Um, and once you do that authentication, uh, we're making a couple of calls here, and you can see that we're uh, making calls to this commerce uh, web store carts active. We hop back over to uh, the, uh, the help documentation, you can see that that's exactly what it's suggested to do, right? So that's a little bit about how uh, the node side of this works. So node in this case is the one going out to Salesforce, getting the information when it's told to, and bringing it back for uh, the React front end. Now to show a little bit about the uh, front end side of this, if you go back up here into the client, uh, this is where the React side actually lives. I already have the uh, add the cart opened up. So one of the really powerful things about React is that you can make little components and place them in multiple different spots. So one of the ones I created was add to cart. You can see that uh, it's pretty simple. It's just showing uh, a button. It's showing it in iterables that you can go up and down for uh, the quantity here. Uh, but the most important thing here is it's interfacing with the cart service, which is actually going out to uh, my backend uh, node infrastructure and pulling that information. So pretty typical structure for a node and a React project if you're familiar with those two. Uh, but the really powerful thing here is that this is working directly with Salesforce and pulling the information uh, straight in. So I wanted to show one more thing here uh, live and, and hope that everything works. Uh, so we're gonna go into our product here. Uh, this is the product that we're showing on the front end. 
And I want to make a quick update to, um, to show that this is all pulling in real time. So in Salesforce, I can quickly make a update by just clicking edit, going down to the field that I like to update. In this case, I've only pulled in two fields, but you can pull in as many as you want. I pulled in the SKU, and I pulled in the description, so we actually know a little bit about this product here. So if I were to go over here and say, uh, let's see if I can do this with one hand, PDX is awesome, and click save here. Uh, we should be able to go back to our site, refresh, and uh, we'll be able to see TDX is awesome down here. So you can see that this information is in real time going through and, and uh, pulling the information up for us. So, went through that very fast. A um, couple of key takeaways that you guys are going to want from this. Let's nice. click her back up here. Um, first thing as you're considering going headless with the B2B Commerce site is you need to determine which of the degrees of headlessness you want to go with first. And it might be a phased approach. You might start with a partially headless site and you might go to a full headless afterwards. And that's totally okay. Second one is you need to determine the platform that you're planning on using for the headless infrastructure. And the third is you need to POC your approach. Make sure you go and you take a project like this and go POC, make sure the APIs give you what you need, how you're gonna structure it, how you're gonna kind of mesh the data together. So that said, there's three links here that I think would be helpful for you. The first one is the repo that I promised you. That's everything you saw, uh, plus a little bit more. And then the middle one here is a new article on uh, Salesforce Bed. I'm sure you guys are familiar with them where I go a little bit more in depth on this concept because I knew I only had 20 minutes here and I wanted to cover the high level stuff, but I wanted to go deeper for you as well. That should be helpful for you. And the third one is that make a completely free YouTube series on B2B commerce that if you're interested more in learning about B2B commerce and how to use it for your business, it's a great place to go just to get educated. And with that, we have five minutes for questions.